Good morning, stock market land. We're gonna get right into the charts. Again, this channel is all about technical analysis, trade ideas, it's really made for traders and swing traders. I don't do a whole lot of day trading, but a lot of swing trading. So again, we're gonna use the charts to tell us where stocks have a high probability of going and nothing's guaranteed. We have to manage our risk, risk reward ratios, all these technical concepts I teach in my course link in the description below. I priced it affordable for everyone. So it's available for the masses. Check it out if you haven't done so already. I think there's a lot of value there. We're gonna get right into the charts with SPY. So a couple things, I did pop up some moving, at, some moving indicators, the 50, 100, and 200 day moving averages, simple moving averages. And because I know that the S&P 500 has been bouncing off the 50 day moving average for quite a while. You can see here in marked in gr that green lines your 50 day and you can see all the little reactions where the owl goes and trade. This is your dip buying, you know, this is your dip buying uh, crowd right there and the owl goes basically. And we're basically coming into that 50 day right now. So we'll see, you know, see if we get another, if this is just another buy the dip. Uh, we do have horizontal support right there at 442.09 it looks like there's some support and that 50 day so we need to see that break or that go with conviction ideally for the next leg down so that's really what i got there looking at the Q's, triple Q's, we've got we've had some selling uh since last friday and again i got short right here on this day on that breakdown and there's it's really just been red candles ever since so i think that that's likely going to continue the 50 day on that one is down here and there's also some horizontal support at 369 you know it's about 369 57 or 60 right in there so i'm looking for a at a minimum a move down to there whether that happens today or this week i don't know but again that's kind of the minimum move before the potential dip buyers step in so that is all I see there. I think there's likely more downside than just that little that little tiny dip. But again, the dip buyers are are gonna, there's going to be dip buyers waiting down there. They're going to buy the dip, but it doesn't mean that they're going to hold the you know that they're going to be able to hold it and and make the markets move to new highs. So things to watch for. We'll probably get a small reaction and we'll see how muted it is. And then that's it. Let's look at the small caps again. <clears throat> Again, the small caps, which are often a leading indicator, a leading indice, indice, are just trading sideways. You can see really going all the way back to uh, January, pretty much this entire year, they're just trading sideways now. And that is, you know, that's kind of a warning sign. We're consolidating up here, but we could be create, creating a big flat top uh, and then we're gonna break to the downside. Till we break one side of the range or the other, bottom or the top of this trade, I've got it marked in green. Uh, really for me, it's just no trade. Right now we're in the middle of the range. Real quick, just touch base on gold. No real change in gold. You can see pretty much all week, uh, you know, it's just been chopping sideways right here on gold bullion. So no change, still above support, still above major trend line, uh, trend line support, so. We need to see a impulsive move, some sort of a breakout. I think it's gonna to be to the upside, but again, until we uh, see it, we're just grinding around, consolidating here. No change there. No real change in the miners as well. Uh, we're just seeing, you know, kind of grinding action. This one, I am gold. This one does look to start, like it's starting to break out, but if you look at the hourly, we are at, you know, I, we're at the top of this range right here where it's been rejected each time. So you'll see there on the daily, we ramp up, we're, we're hitting that and, and so far below it. So not we can't say that's a complete breakout to the upside yet, but we did have this downward bearish rising wedge pattern, or sorry, bullish falling wedge pattern. And basically we had a pretty impulsive break to the upside. So I think it's likely we've broken out. Maybe we're gonna come in back test and then run. Uh, that one's looking good. Uh, the rest of the miners still really no change. So we'll move on. Corn, I pointed this one out. Uh, a couple days ago as a key objective area to buy uh, at support, which was right here at 1918, 1917, somewhere right in there. And so far, and you can see the undercut it, but recovered it. So far, that's been all uh, all greens so from that moment. So this thing's up, and I talked about how I went long it, but it's up about 3.5%, nothing major. So I could see some more upside. That might have been the low. We'll see. But I, I think uh, we, we could trade all the way up to this trend line right here. 
So that's just a shorter term trade right there that we're kind of keeping an eye on. Uh, but I do see some more upside there. Someone asked me to check out Deer. This was a trade idea that I pointed out a while ago. Again, I took the short on Deer, I believe, right here. And then we covered that short down here. And that was that was the end of the trade for that one. I didn't uh, continue with that trade. But you quick analysis on this one. So we rallied off that low. We ran up, made uh, two new highs. They didn't quite make a brand new high ab above the former high here. But right here, you can see we do have negative divergence where you made a slightly new high right here. And if you look at the momentum, it's lower than the previous high. So there's your negative divergence right there on the RSI. And it's also there on the PPO. So that tells you that we're likely going to reverse trend. And I would say I just mark that out right there, that trend line. A break below today's lows should set us up for a move likely down to the next level of major support, which we didn't tag before, but I see that at 319, about 319.20. Uh, and a break below that, we've got another level down here at three, two, or sorry, 267, we'll call it. And then a big, big support all the way down here at 180.70. Uh, now, it la that's not going to happen overnight if we were to get all the way down there. That's more likely going to happen if the market is in a, a bear market. So big support down there. That would be a final, final target if it could get down there. But there's some levels to watch and kind of what I'd be looking for. You got the 200-day moving average right below. So you do have kind of some support right in here. You need to see that taken out. Nike continuing to the downside, down another percent and a half today. So again, sell signal was right here. This is what I talked about. We had negative divergences telling us that we're going to get that sell signal. And we saw that right back in here. So I was pointing that trade out as a possible trade setup back here. Then we got an actionable trade trigger right there. We entered the short. I entered the short and it's been... It's been uh, down ever since. So again, this one's profitable now by about 5%, looking for more downside. You know, we're gonna get, we're likely gonna get a bounce along the way. This gap is really obvious. So we're looking at gap, you know, first level of support right there at 146.19, next level of support and, and gap fill at 134.86. Those are the two levels we're looking at. And final target, if we were to head all the way down there, that's another 13.5%. So about a 20% trade all in all if we capture the whole thing. So there's that's what I'm watching. Uh, still short. Starbucks. Okay, so big counter trend move that recently just played out. And today you get the big continuation of the downtrend. So again, Starbucks was a short trade that was pointed out. I entered the short trade right up here when it circled. But, uh, you know, if you were conservative, you maybe wanted to wait for the breakdown, which was right here. So the short entry was right there on that day. So this is an island cluster top reversal pattern. See how you gap up, trade up there for a couple days, gap down, creating this island or floating top. So that's a uh, reversal pattern. And so far it's playing out perfectly. You can see down, we have a counter trend move and we continue down. So as far as I can tell, that was a big bear flag. Let me kind of mark that out and we're continuing the resolution to the downside. Bear flag is basically gonna be something like this. There's your flag pole. You got a flag, which is about right here. We'll just clean it up a little bit. And it was about like that. And then what you do is you take this and extend it out. And there you go. There's your measured target, which is 109.55 is the measured target. And obviously I think that, you know, that you can see that I've had that marked out as well. That's that was horizontal support. We held that for a while. So looking for a move down to it, at least to there. I think it's likely we're going to head lower, though. I don't think we're going to get, uh, you know, I don't think we're making new all-time highs in this anytime soon. However, one potential to watch for is a head and shoulders top. So you can see here, shoulder, head. If we get down here, you know, and this could be the shoulder right there. So maybe we hit the neckline. We're probably going to get a reaction down here. It's going to grind around, chop higher, bounce then I think it's going to break. So that's how I think that's going to play out. We'll see. But again, I do think once we get down to this area, there will be some buyers. We're probably going to get a little bounce right there. Uh, I think it'll be muted and then we'll break the neckline. So you can play that either way. You know, if you get down here, maybe you want to cover, let it bounce a little bit, re-enter the short or wait for a break of the neckline. 
That's the most conservative way, you know, if you got down here, cover your short trade and then wait for a break of the neckline to re-enter the short for the next, uh, well, for a big move to the downside. Again, the major target, if we break the neckline of this potential head and shoulders pattern is gonna be something like that, which is a move, you know, about down to my final support zone, which I have marked out right there, which is 93 or 91, right in there. All right, if we got down there, I'd be covering and that would be the end of the short trade. KHC, I haven't talked about this one for a while. Again, I'm long this one. We are, you know, we'll see. It's basically, we had a breakout. So here's your downtrend line right here on KHC. <clears throat> we also hit major support, which is right there at 36.18. You can see that there was a big gap here back in 2019 and we gapped right down to that level. And that's been resistance ever since. So you can see we held resistance. You know, there's your gap down and then you hit resistance here. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Clicking the wrong thing on my mouse. Uh, then you hit resistance right there. And and then we finally broke above. Nice impulsive breakout too, and it's been support. It was support here. We undercut support right there, but we're, we're still kind of holding that area. So I'm expecting this to hold support. We're just briefly below it right now, but again, this is intraday trading, and I'm looking for a bounce off this to the upside. Uh, the other thing that keeps me bullish on this is the bullish divergence. See the momentum, how we're just moving up right here on the RSI and the PPO while prices continue to kind of grind lower. That's bullish divergence telling me that, again, it's just another indicator telling, giving you, uh, you know, putting, putting the trade or the probabilities in your favor for a long trade to work out. So I still like it. Now, again, if we start to get, an, if we get an impulsive breakdown, uh, we could have, you know, had a, had a had a bull trap right here. So ways to trade it. Again, it's all about taking positions at key levels and then, you know, stopping out when you know you're wrong and being wrong small, right? And so that's why it's important to use technical analysis and the trend lines to evaluate when to take a position. And then you'll know when you're wrong uh, relatively quickly and, you know, hope, hopefully relatively small. Uh, that's all I got for today, guys. Leave me a comment below if you guys want me to chat, uh, look at anything else. And also leave me a thumbs up on your way out. If you've been with me this long and you've listened to the video, uh, just click that thumbs up button on your way out. I do appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Bye.